Welcome back. Today I want to talk about a few techniques, a couple techniques, and how we can see them reflected beautifully in Hakala. How basically it's all just another way to get into Hakala, how to get into the right brain, the processes of the right brain, so that we are predominantly using the right hemisphere of the brain, and just how magical and powerful, and I mean very, very quickly, instantly powerful that can be. So when you look at these and you start seeing the parallels, you just go, oh my goodness, it's all Hakala. It's all about the right brain. So let's get into it. The first technique is EMDR, eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Oh my goodness, what a mouthful. EMDR, it's a wonderful technique. You may have seen it, you may have heard about it, you may have tried it out and it worked well for you. So what do you do? You're in a negative emotion, you're in a narrow place and you want to expand. You want to get a little bit bigger. I'm, I'm just too narrow. I'm confined in the little box of this emotion. I'm clinging to it and it, I just can't get out of it. I know it's wrong, but I just can't get out of it, right? So you try the eye movement, right? So what do you do? One of the techniques for EMDR is to be in the negative emotion and then move your eyes left and right, left and right, over and over again. So I'm in the negative emotion, oh, that, that frustrating, whatever it is, right? And then I move my eyes left and right, and left and right, and left and right, and left, and pretty soon, that thing that was so horrible is not so horrible anymore. That feeling that was inside of me has reduced dramatically, right? And if you're not sure, go back and feel the negative emotion again. Yeah, there was that thing and it was so bad. It was so frustrating, right? Now look left, now look right. Look left, look right. And pretty soon you fall out of the negative confining space that you found yourself in. Now, does that sound and look a little bit familiar to the processes of Hakala? So try something else. Okay, hold on to something that you're, I have to get this thing, right? You're very, very focused on this. I have to get this thing, or I feel this negative emotion, or I feel this limiting decision about myself, right? Think about one of those, right? Hold on to it. Hold on to that. There's that thing I've got to get, right? And then pick a point up above you just up above eye level, look at that one point and then open up your peripheral vision. Make sure you can see the wall on one side and the wall on the other. Even put up your fingers like this and move them back and forth. Make sure you can see all of your fingers all at once while you're looking at that one point. And this will automatically open up your peripheral vision. Your pupils will dilate and you're using your peripheral vision as you look at all of your fingers as you stare straight ahead. So I'm looking at this hand and this hand at the same time. I'm holding them simultaneously. And that is a neurological driver. It will drive you into the right hemisphere of your brain. And where's that confining space? How do you feel about that thing? There was that thing, right? And then you go into the peripheral vision and what happens? It feels very, very different, doesn't it? It evaporates. That, that wall, you were trying to go for something and you felt like there was this wall impeding you and you go into Hakala, you go into the peripheral vision and what happens? The wall evaporates. It was all inside of your mind. And by going into the right hemisphere of the brain, you suddenly notice that your world is much bigger than you thought it was. So now look at the EMDR and you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right? And what's happening as you go back and forth? 
you're expanding just a little bit. As you go back and forth, I'm going way over here and way over here and way over here and way over here. And you're just expanding a little bit. Somebody sent me a video and the woman was talking about being in a deep meditation. So we're practicing the meditation. We've done our stretching. It's always good to stretch a little bit. Watch the Maha Mudra video that I have, right? I'm practicing some heart rate variability resonance. The body is getting slowed down. I'm going into the low idle state. The heart rate is lowering. The breath rate is becoming longer. It's lowering, right? And I feel so good, right? In that low idle state, the body is calming down. And in a reflexive manner, the mind is calming down. And it's just beautiful. And now I'm in that deep state and this lady is talking about a technique and she says look left look right look left look right and feel that moment that the trance begins to catch you right look left look right look left look right and what is she doing she's opening up she's expanding this way expanding this way expanding this way expanding this way right hakala you're moving into the right side of the brain into that more expansive and unlimited space. So which will you use? Well, try out the Hakala, because when you do the Hakala deeply, bam, you go in, you don't have to wait for the trance. The trance happens instantaneously. If you'll notice it, if you will allow it, the trance happens automatically in Hakala. But then, Okay, I'm doing Hakala, I feel really good. Let's say I did the stretching, okay? I did the Mahamudra, then I did the heart rate variability resonance. Maybe I did some Om Japa in the chakras. Now I'm just doing some Hakala, and now I'm gonna try this technique. I'm gonna go left and right, and left and right, and just keep expanding. Look left, look right, look left, look right, right? I'm just expanding and opening up. And then I'll go into Hakala, and then I'll go left and right, and then I'll go into Hakala, and then I'll go left and right, and see what happens to you in your meditation. I think you're going to love it. Now, where else do you see this in your life? Have you ever had just a horrible day, and you're like, I I, I can't even, I don't even want to go home. I don't want to be by myself. I'm just going to get in the car and go for a drive. And maybe you grab your buddy or you grab your family member and you get in the car and you just drive. And you just drive and drive and drive. And after a while, you suddenly feel a little bit better. Why is that? Why would that work, right? Think about it. You're moving forward and you get that feeling, oh, I'm moving forward, I'm moving forward, I'm getting out. I'm get, I, I was felt this confining space inside of me and I just moved forward, moved forward, moved forward. And it helped me get this feeling of, I'm out, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not so confined. The world was crushing in on me. It was too much and I couldn't handle it and I just went for a drive and suddenly I feel more expanded. What gives you that signal that you are moving forward? Well, it's everything rushing past, right? Everything's rushing past, everything's rushing past, everything's rushing past. It's Hakala. Do you see it? It's rushing past you, it's Hakala, right? I have an amazing student, an amazing friend that met me because of this channel. I'm, I, it's one of the most glorious things that's happened to me because of doing all of these videos. I meet incredible people. And this woman has had access to her right brain her entire life. It happened, she was born that way or she, she was born with less resistance going into the right brain very, very deeply, very, very explosively expansive. She had less of that. So she had more access to the right brain from her childhood or her entire life. This is one of those stories where you, you grow up and you think everybody is that way. And then you slowly realize, no, no, it's just me. It just, it's just, it's, I'm the only one. And that's her experience. And I asked her one time, I said, tell me about your childhood. What was it like? She said, my favorite thing to do was to go for a walk, go for a long walk. And what's happening when you go for a walk, when you go for a run, the world is going by. 
get a little bit of that expansiveness and this feeling. I'm getting out of the narrow space, going into the big space, going into the right side of the brain, into expansiveness. And what happens with the runner? Well, first of all, there's a carbon oxygen exchange that happens through the body. Usually we're too sedentary to enable the perfect balance of oxygen exchange deep into the muscle fibers of the entire body. We're, we just don't run as much as we used to. So the runner goes out and all of the muscles are using up everything. And so they produce a lot of carbon and they give that carbon back to the blood. And the blood is carrying a lot of oxygen and you've got a carbon oxygen exchange that takes place. But when you're not running, by the way, and you're just sitting, but your heart rate is way up and maybe your breath rate is way up because you're stressed out, right? And the, and the body thinks, I think I need to run because I'm stressed out, but there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to go logically. And so I'm just going to sit here and be stressed out, right? So the breath rate is up. There's lots of oxygen in the blood, but there's no exchange because the muscles are not producing carbon for the exchange. It's a marketplace and they have to exchange. So how does the yogi fix this? He lowers the breath rate and he introduces more carbon because of that lowered breath rate. And so there's more carbon in the lungs. There's more carbon when you breathe through the nose, by the way. That's why the yogi always breathes through the nose. It's much more economical for the body. So there's more carbon because of the nose breath. There's more carbon because of the lowered breath rate. The gases sit in the lungs longer and they produce more carbon because of that more carbon goes into the blood the blood hands that carbon to the muscles the muscles hand it back for oxygen and now you've rebooted the system you have carbon oxygen exchange that's the miracle of the long breathing that the yogi does the lowered breath rate breathing produces that exchange. So the yogi will be sitting at home and suddenly he'll feel the full effects of the runner's high. He will get that huge carbon oxygen exchange. it will feel fantastic. Like every cell in your body is suddenly alive. And you're like, what is going on? <laughs> Look how, how can this be? It's because you re booted that whole system of carbon oxygen exchange and you lowered your breath rate. Everything comes into line. Everything starts to work very, very economically. Okay. So the yogi gets the runners high. The other thing that the runner is getting is he's going and going and going and you get that feeling. I'm running away. I'm getting out of this narrow place that I was. Everything is rushing by as the runner is running and you open up that peripheral vision a little bit and you get into the right brain. So that's the second thing that the runner is doing. So as a yogi, you've got the first one because you're lowering the breath rate, right? You're under seven breaths per minute. You're using the resonant breathing app, right? At home, when you have a chance and put it on fade and then just let it go, right? So you're using that lowered breath rate. You want the second thing as well. You want the hakala. You want the expansion. So do the lowered breath rate, do the stretching beforehand, do the om japa in the chakras, right? and then go into the hakala and see what happens. And then if you want to deepen it, look left, look right, look left, look right, and open up, open up and see everything at once, the hakala, right? Now we're getting into the right brain. We're getting into expansion and it's magical. It's really, really magical. So I hope you can see those parallels because they're really deep and they're really beautiful. So you've got hakala, You've got the process of EMDR. You've got the runner's high. You've got going for a drive. You've got the going into a trance technique. All of these are using expansiveness. They're using the right side of the brain. It's magical. And this is exactly what all of the yogis are doing when they sit very still in the darkness for a long time, the eyes dilate and they automatically go into their peripheral vision when you sit in the dark for a long time. It happens automatically.
And that's why when you go on a dark retreat, you start seeing more light automatically because the pupils dilate, but you can train them to dilate and then you can dilate them at will. And you just go into a semi dark or a very dark room. You dilate your eyes and it's magical right away. You start getting more in contact with the right brain and all of the deep knowingness that comes along with the right hippocampus. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you.